We're now in section 8 of our AutoCAD Electrical 2015 course. And as per usual with the working files, we now have a project demo 08. I'm in the schematic subfolder in the drawing demo 01.dwg. Now I'm not going to be working on any AutoCAD Electrical drawings. Because we're looking at project basics, the first thing we're going to look at is our project files. Now these are normally stored in the same folder as all the drawings for your AutoCAD electrical project. So if I go down to Windows Explorer now, and I'll explain what's going on here in our Demo 08 folder, you can see there. Now I've stored everything that I need for my AutoCAD electrical project for Demo 08 in a folder called Demo 08. There's all the drawings, 01 down to 12. And then you've got these three files here. You've got demo 08 WD title. You've then got a WDP file and a WDT file. Now these three files set up your AutoCAD electrical project. The WDP file is the project file. File locations and project locations are stored in there. WDL is your title lines file. So these are all the lines that will go on your title block or your project title, and they also go into your project settings. So you might have this project is for such and such a client and so on. You can put all that information into the WDL file. The WDT file is what sets up the templates that you use, as in DWT files, for your AutoCAD electrical project. As we move further into the project settings and how the project manager works throughout this course, you'll begin to understand how all these project files link together. So at the moment, what we're going to do is we're going to just stay with the WDP file here. And you can see that that has a suffix WDP. So P for project, T for title block, L for lines. That's how you work with those files. And they're always in your project folder which in my case is Demo 08. So I'll just minimize that again. And then what we'll do, as we work through this section of Project Basics, you'll start to understand how these project files, the drawings, the WDT files, all link together. Let's have a look now at the Project Manager in a little bit more detail. For working file purposes, again, we're in the Demo 08 project, and I've still got Demo 01.dwg open. Now we might change that as we utilize our project manager. Now our project manager is our navigation tool for AutoCAD Electrical. What it allows us to do is to move around all the drawings and also organize our drawings for our AutoCAD Electrical projects. Now at the moment, as I said, we're in the project demo underscore 08. I'm in the schematic subfolder and we've got the drawing demo 01.dwg open. Now the project manager itself, we've already seen how to move it around the screen and how to dock it on the screen. But what does it actually do? Up at the top here, we have a little toolbar. We've got open project, new project, new drawing. We can refresh the view in the project manager. That one there obviously is grayed out at the moment. What that allows us to do is to check and mark up our projects. Here we've got a project wide update or retag, drawing list display configuration, i.e. the drawing list here. We've also got Publish and Plot and the usual Help button as well. So I can click on Help and it will tell me all about the Project Manager. So that's very easy. The toolbar is very self-explanatory. I've also got a pull-down list here where I can go to a new project, open an existing project, go to recent projects, or pick a project that's already available in my project library. At the moment, Demo 08 is highlighted because it's the current project. I can click away from that and that list then goes back into the menu there in the Project Manager. Now the bit underneath is Projects. So there's my Projects there, and if I look, I've got the little Project symbol next to Demo 08, then a Folder symbol, Schematic, and then the Drawing symbol next to all the drawings in the Schematic folder. What will also happen in the Project Manager is your current project is highlighted in bold, as is the folder you're in, as is the current drawing. So if I decided to now open up Demo 02 by double-clicking on it, that drawing would open up in the drawing area, as you've seen it do there, and you'll see it pauses for a little while and you get the little Windows arrows spinning around. That's because it's actually updating the project as it goes on the fly. So you might get a little pause sometimes when you open up a new drawing in an AutoCAD electrical project. But if I go up here now and perhaps click on Schematic again, can you see that Demo 02 is now showing as the current drawing? 
and it is it's here and it's highlighted in bold there if i go on the quick access toolbar and click this way next project drawing you'll see that demo 03 is highlighted in the list now and demo 03 is open there in the drawing area so that's your project manager there now what you can do is you can have a look at the details of these drawings it's down here in this little panel here now you can either have details or you can have a preview of the drawing itself so you've got a choice of details or preview now there isn't a preview for this one so what i'll do is i'll go back to demo 01 and there's the preview there if i go back there preview and then details again so i can toggle between those two i can also slide up and down and as you can see there there is actually a description for that drawing the file name the status of that drawing and also its location as well other less important information but it might be important if you're an admin for let's say a cad department it's file size when it was last saved so there's a whole shed load of information available to you in the project manager when you're using it in autocad electrical now we're still in the demo 08 project and as you can see i've got drawings demo 01 open and demo 03 open you can see the tabs there at the top of the screen now those two drawings are open in the schematic subfolder of demo 08 so if i click on the plus sign there you can see that my drawing list then appears now my drawing list is very important now what we can do is i can click here and drag and the details can be made smaller so that i can see that drawing list in its entirety like so now the drawing list is where all the drawings are listed for your particular project so demo 08 has a schematic subfolder but also a panel subfolder so if i click on the plus sign there you can see that we've got two drawings in the panel folder as well demo 08 demo 09 and as you can see there the whole idea of the drawing list is it allows you to list all the drawings that are linked to your autocad electrical project to quickly go through them you can use your arrows up here on the quick access toolbar like so so i go there there's demo 02 click again demo 03 and so on each time i click can you see what's happening to the tab it's updating the tab each time so the drawing list is quite handily just opening up one drawing at a time if i want two drawings open let's say demo 05 and also demo 04 if i double click there i can open up as many drawings as i want in my autocad electrical session so you can see i've got demo 05 it's there demo 04 there and you can see as i move from one to the other the bold highlights there in the drawing list telling me which drawing is currently on the screen this can be altered very easily i can select a drawing let's say demo 12 click and drag and i can move that say up to the top here and that then moves up to the top of the list it doesn't have to be sorted numerically in autocad electrical they wouldn't actually just be demo 12 demo 01 and things you would actually have them stating things like it would be let's say your input output flow chart or your connector drawing and so on but what I'm doing here is just giving you an idea of how this works. So you can see there that I can bring demo 12 now back down to the bottom of the drawing list if I want to. I can also just refresh the list very quickly by clicking like so. And if I come up there now, everything has been refreshed and tidied up the way it should be. And it doesn't look any different. It won't look any different because I hadn't made any dramatic changes beforehand. But you can always refresh your list here by clicking on the refresh button. So that's your drawing list in the project manager in AutoCAD Electrical. In the project manager with your drawings, you can assign descriptions and sections to your drawing as well. So let's have a look at that in more detail. We're in demo 08, the project. I'm in the schematic subfolder. And at the moment, I've just got demo 01.dwg open. I'm only going to work on this drawing because it's already got a description you'll notice in the details below in the details pane in the project manager. Now, how do you edit that information? How do you put descriptions and sections into your AutoCAD electrical drawings? Well, the good thing is there's a database, like I said, linked to the AutoCAD electrical project. And that works with your drawings in such a way that you can add this information. So if I hover over demo 01 there, right click, and go to properties on the shortcut menu there's my drawing properties right there so when i click on drawing properties you'll notice i've got a lot of sections that i can look at i can change the settings for components in the drawing 
for wire numbering, for cross-referencing, for styles, and also the drawing format itself. I'm just going to go back to drawing settings because we're only looking at descriptions and sections right now. So there's the description field. Now I've got three here. I can also pick a description from something on the drawing if I want to. So you can see there it says flow and interconnection diagram, input, output, list. That's what I've got down here in the details. So that's where it gets that information from. Now I've also got sheet values. Obviously this is drawing demo01.dwg. So the sheet value is going to be 1. I'm going to change that slightly and make it 0, 0, 1. Always work in like multiples of 10 or 100. So for a particular section, you might start at drawing 100, and then for the next section, start at drawing 200. Always do that so that you've got a good bit of scope for adding any new drawings later on. Now this is demo 08, so I'm going to change the actual drawing itself there, and I'm going to change that to 08, and then I'll put in an underscore 01 like that. So that's the actual drawing sheet value. The sheet number is 001, the drawing itself is 0801. Now you can add your sections, now there's nothing in there right now because I haven't put any details in there, so you can put a section in there. I might just put an alphanumeric value, the section might just be AB001, for example. So once I've put that information in, when I click on OK, that'll actually change that data. And you'll notice here now, if I look at the details, it's locked, there's the description, and it now has a sheet 001 number in there. Can you see that? So that's how you change your descriptions and your sections. Now you'll notice there's a lot of information there that isn't displayed, such as the section and the subsection. A lot of that is used in your reporting tools. So up here in reporting, when you start doing reports out of your AutoCAD electrical project here using the reports button, what you can do is you can specify a section. Now all the drawings that have that section listed, their information will then be used on that particular section in that particular report. So that's how you work with those sections and subsections. The descriptions and the sheet numbers always appear in the details. And again, you can filter things like sheet number and description when you're creating reports as well. In the previous section, we looked at descriptions and sections on drawings in the drawing list in the project manager. So what further changes can we make to drawings in AutoCAD Electrical? Well, there's a lot of information that we can work in. Again, I've got the drawing Demo 01 open in the project Demo 08. I'm gonna right click on Demo 01, and what I'm going to do is just go into the drawing properties. So drawing settings incorporate things like our sheet values, our descriptions, and our sections there. But let's start having a look at some more detail here, like components. What we're looking at here is the component tag format. So you can see there, format and number, percent %f, percent %n, sequential, line references. You can also search for the PLC input-output address when you insert components into the drawing. That's obviously if you've got a PLC in that particular drawing. What we've got there is also any other settings that we might need, like wire numbers. The wire number format, percent %n is the number. And again, you've got this search for PLC input output address on insert. Now that setting, it's looking for what they call a programmable logic controller input output address. So the input output addresses might be specific and linked to a specific wire number. So you can search for that by ticking that box automatically when you put a wire into a drawing. Again, you can set it as sequential or use the line reference and the suffix setup. So if I click on suffix setup there, can you see that I've got different suffixes? A, B, C, D. So the first incidence of the wire will have nothing. The second instance of the same wire number will have A after it. So you can see there, 100, 100A, 100B, and so on. So you can have a suffix list for reference-based wire numbers if you need to. Cross-referencing. So when you're cross-referencing on the same drawing, remember in drawing demo 01, we've got links to components in other drawings. That's when you cross-reference. Now, you can have component cross-reference display just text only, a graphical format, or you can have a table format if you want to. We'll go into that in a little bit more detail later on. Styles, this is very important. You've got arrow styles, PLC, programmable logic controller styles as well. 
wiring styles. If you've got a loop going across one wire going across another, you can either have a loop, a gap, or you can make it solid. Personally, I always use the loop because it looks as it should in an electrical installation. You've got wire tees as well. When you tee one wire off another, you can use a dot or an angle or an angle two. And again, I tend to use the dot. It just works as far as I'm concerned. If you've got any fan in and out markers as well, you've got all different styles here, you'll notice. Just select a style, whichever style you want to use. Normally defaults to one. And your layer list is multi-wire. So that's set up in your environment variables in your AutoCAD electrical project. And then drawing format, these are the other changes we can make when we're bringing ladders into our logic ladder drawings. We can specify all the settings there. Format referencing, if you're using an XY grid to specify locations of components, perhaps on a point-to-point -point component schematic, you can change it to an XY grid or just X zones going across the top. XY grid does it X and Y, as you can see, horizontally and vertically, or just reference numbers. That brings in the reference numbers. So you can see there, if I've got a logic ladder, it uses the rungs on the logic ladder. So it's up to you how you set that up. Again, click on Setup. You can do numbers only, numbers and rulings, sheets and numbers, and so on. There's all different settings and changes that you can make to your drawings here. So I'm just going to click on Cancel there and not apply any of those changes I may have made. But those are all the other changes that you can potentially make for each individual AutoCAD electrical drawing in your project. Something you'll notice in AutoCAD electrical on the ribbon up at the top of the screen is you don't have an output tab like you have in normal generic AutoCAD. Plotting in AutoCAD electrical is very, very different. Remember, you're plotting information from an AutoCAD Electrical project database. So you've got to make sure that everything is working, all the drawings are saved, and more importantly, the settings are correct and ready to plot. You plot from the project manager. It's this icon here. So if I click on the fly out there, you can see that I can plot the project. I can publish it to web. I can publish it to various portable document formats, such as PDF, DWF, and DWFX. I can also just zip the project up into a zip file and forward it to someone via email if I need to. So let's have a look at plotting the project first. So this is our batch plot. It takes us into a list where we select the drawings to process. So I'm just going to say do all of them and then I'm going to click on OK. Now obviously you could pick individual ones and then click on OK if you want to. Notice there's the first mention of our section. AB001 on drawing demo 01 that we set up previously. And there's the subsection section there as well. So you can see that when you start bringing in these section numbers and subsection numbers, they appear against the drawings in any of the lists. So when I click on OK now, I get this dialog box, which looks nothing like the plot dialog box in regular AutoCAD. So we decide on which layout tab to plot, and it's going to be the model tab. Pick a list from the active drawing. I could go Layout 1 or As Saved. I'm just going to go with the Model tab because that's where everything is. I can also, if I want to, run pre-plot and post-plot command script files. So if you're used to running macros in AutoCAD and you're good at programming, you can potentially include those as well. You then pick your output device name. So you can use a plot configuration, a PC3 file. As soon as you do that, it takes you to the plotters that are available in AutoCAD. So these are the same list that you'd get in the original AutoCAD plot dialog box. So I want them to go to a DWF6 e-plot, let's say. I click on Open, and it adds it to the list there. Detailed plot configuration mode is off. If I click that, you can see that I can set all of the detailed plot settings in here. Things like portrait landscape, plot extents, plot display, and so on plot to fit, plot scale, all the sorts of things that you would perhaps set up in a page setup in regular AutoCAD. I'll switch that off for the moment. Optional page setup name, so there might be a page setup I can choose, or I can pick from a page setup list if there is one. Do I want to plot to a file? Now, sometimes you do. It depends on how your network is set up for plotting. In the old days, you normally sent plots to a PLT file. They went to a plotter room 
and there was normally like a dumb terminal next to the plotter and all the plots went to that dumb terminal and then came out of the plotter so you can still do that and also this is quite an important one do you want to plot in normal sequence or in reverse order think about that for a moment if you're going to plot and you've got 10 sheets you want 10 to come out first then 9 then 8 so that you've got drawing number one on top of the pile. So you might want to plot in reverse order. So you've got the choice of OK or OK in reverse. I'm not going to make any changes there and I'm not going to plot, so I'll click on Cancel. But you get the idea there. It's very different to regular AutoCAD. If I want to go out to, let's say, the web, what will happen there is it will ask me where the folder is going to go with the images that I'm plotting. So I can plot out to the regular sorts of images, DWF, JPEG or PNG, they're all web-based. I select what I want, specify a folder where they're going to go, and then I hit OK. And what will happen then is all those DWFs, JPEGs or PNGs go to that folder, and they can then be utilised on the web. Now what will happen is it will put it into a temporary folder for building. And then what you do is you then go and suck those into your website using whatever tools you might use. I'm not going to do that, so I'll click on Cancel there. And then the third one is publish to PDF, DWF, or DWFX. So again, I can select all of them by clicking on Do All, click on OK, and as you can see, include when adding sheets, model tab, layout tabs. I'm publishing to what type? DWF, DWFX, or PDF. Do you want it to be a multi sheet file or a single sheet file? Substitute true type fonts for SHX fonts if there's any in your drawing. And you've got things like bookmarks, hyperlinks, zoom factors. And also the best bit about that, you can run the publish in the background so that you can carry on working while it's publishing to these sheets. I'm not going to do that, so I'll click on cancel there. Last but not least, we've got the zip project option. So if I click on that, I'll get an error. And I know I'll get an error because I haven't set up a default zip program executable. When I zip things up, I normally use something like WinZip, for example. And then you can zip all of those up. But I haven't actually told AutoCAD Electrical where to find that WinZip executable. And that goes into your .env file for this particular project. You would specify it. And then all you've got to do is put a text editor up on the screen. Go to the env file, open it up, and you can edit it. So you can see there that I haven't got a zip executable defined. So I've just got to go and find one, make sure it's in the envelope file or environment file as it's normally known as well. Envelope or environment, it does vary from company to company, project to project. So that's how you do your batch plotting in lots of different ways in AutoCAD Electrical. Getting around your AutoCAD Electrical drawings is very, very easy. I've already shown you that you can go up and down in the drawing list here and just double click on a drawing to open it. You can also go up to your quick access toolbar here. So if I click on this arrow here, that will take me to the next drawing along. So that will take me to 03, as you can see. There it is, highlighted in the drawing list. And there it is there, Demo 03. If I click on it again, it takes me to Demo 04 this time. And I can just move around like that quite easily, going up and down the list. So let's go back to the previous drawings now and work our way back to Demo 02, which is there. What I'm going to do now is zoom in on some components in the drawing. So you can see there I've got some fuses, I've got some wires, I've also got my conveyor motor there. If I pan up a bit, I've got a hydraulic motor there. And you can see that there's all these different tools, all different junction boxes, fuses, and so on. Another way of getting around the drawings in AutoCAD Electrical is to use this little guy up here in the Quick Access Toolbar, Surfer. If I go to Project, you'll notice he's also here as well in the Project tab. So you've got Surfer and also Continue Surfer. So I can do it either way. There's various ways of clicking on the Surfer command. So let's go into the Surfer command and see what happens. Now, as soon as I go in, it asks me to select a tag for what is called a Surfer Trace. What we're going to do is select a tag for surfing. So I'm going to pick that tag there, MCAB5. As soon as I do that, it points out all the different instances of MCAB5. So what I can do here now is I can select this one here and I'll go to it and it zooms me in. Let's go to this one here, go to that one and it takes me to the next one. Can you see that? I'm surfing around the drawing. Now if I come down a bit, 
and go to say this one here and go to that one it's on a totally different drawing it's actually on one of the panel drawings and what it does is it zooms you in so you can see there there's all the fuses physically in the panel so if i come back up here now and go to this one and go to that one there it takes me back to a different drawing which was the original location i was in my fuse 207 there so i've got fuse 207 there and if i come back here and go here and go to that one you'll notice it zooms me in and there's fuse 207 there on the panel drawing so that's another way of getting around and moving around your drawings in autocad electrical but what you're doing is you're doing it filtering by component rather than just going up and down the drawing list which is actually a much more logical way of doing it because you're following the flow of the circuit and the electrical installation that you've created in your AutoCAD electrical drawings. One of the really neat tools available in AutoCAD electrical is the ability to copy existing projects. There'll always be that occasion where you've worked on a project in the past, you get a new job come in and you think, oh, that's kind of close to what I've done in the past before. What you can do then is look up that particular AutoCAD electrical project and actually copy it using AutoCAD electrical. Now there is a process to this and it does take a little bit of getting used to. You'll find the copy project icon here on the project tab on the ribbon. But there are certain criteria you have to adhere to. Certain things you need to do to make sure that this works. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you don't have any drawings open in the current project. So right now. I've got demo 01 open in the project demo 08. We're going to create the project demo 09. What we need to do is make sure that demo 01 is closed. So we go up to the tab, click on the cross there, make sure that that is closed. Now you'll notice that is closed and you've got a grey area here, no drawings open. But also as well you'll notice it's still the current project. So I'm just going to minimise the schematic folder there. Demo 08 is still the current project. Now if I come down here, I've got a drawing here, connector drawing. You've got to have a drawing open to actually create a copy of a project. So I could create just a new blank drawing if I wanted to. So if I go new like that and go AutoCAD Electrical.DWT like that, as soon as I do that, you'll notice that the copy icon up here is now available. I could have opened up something like connector drawing if I wanted to. But that's already linked to another project. This is just a blank drawing. Demo 08 is still highlighted in bold. So it's still the current project. And I'm stressing that because I want to show you the next trick, so to speak, which is really neat. If I now click on copy here, I get the option to enter the existing project name, or I can browse for a project, or I can just copy the active project, and it finds it for me. That's why I had to close that drawing demo 01 down. Because if any active drawing is one of those to be copied to a new project, cancel now, open a different or new drawing, and restart this command. So there's my new drawing. I'm not going to use it, but I've got a new drawing open. So when I click on OK now, there's the demo 08 WDP file. Now it's asking me select path and name for new project. So I'll go and find the path. So I'm going here. And you can see, look, there's my AutoCAD electrical folders there. I go Movie and Work Files, and there's 08 Project Basics. I go here, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here, and there's my next section, 09 Projects and Drawings. So I double-click in there, and I want to go into the Work Files folder there. And what I'm going to do is create a new folder in there, and I'm going to call that Demo 09. Press Enter. That is now my new project folder. I double click inside that folder and this is where the new WDP file is going to go. And surprise, surprise, it's going to be called demo underscore 09. I click on save and now I get the option to select all the drawings from project demo 08 to take them across to project demo 09. I want all of them to go across, so I click on OK. Title block setup, WDT. Project line labels, WDL. So those are my project related files to be copied. The WDP file I've just done. So this goes back to what we talked about before with the project files. The WDT file, the WDL file and also the WDP file. 
which is what we're doing now. All of this information that we're setting up now goes into the WDP file. But also we're making sure that our title block setup comes across from project demo 08 and also any project line labels, which are in the WDL file. I click on OK. There's all the drawings that are going across and it's going to adjust all of them. I click on OK again and off we go. So that's updating now. That'll take a few seconds to work through that. And what it's doing there now is it's rewriting all of those files and copying all of those files across. As soon as it gets there, it automatically opens up the first drawing of the new project. Notice here in the projects list in the project manager, Demo 09 is now the new current project. Demo 08, I can click on it, right click and close it. I don't need it anymore. So there's Demo 09. I'll expand it out, expand the schematic subfolder, and Demo 01 is now the current drawing in my new copied project, which is Demo 09. Isn't that a neat tool? Everything I've just done in Demo 08 has now been copied across to Demo 09. I've got a new project folder, a new WDP file, a new WDL file, and a new WDT file. All done in a few minutes, saves me countless hours of copying, database linking, it does it all for me. So that's how you copy projects in AutoCAD Electrical.